Okay, we're in Hollywood. Okay, come with me. Look at this cool place. I'm here to meet a good pal of mine, Mark Shulman, who's currently rehearsing with Pink for the next part of the tour. And we're here before anyone else. So this is behind the scenes. Come on. Man, there he is on his phone. Yo! Good, how are you? Yeah. Let's go. Up right on stage. People are about to get here. Let's go look Come at the drums now. Cool. Let's do this. So, my friends, this is sheer, sheer beauty. I'm sorry. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm biased. But this is the most gorgeous and inviting drum set ever on the planet. I'm going to explain to you everything I've got. We'll start over here. That is the Mark Schulman signature snare drum put out by Gretsch. It's no longer on the market, but they are still available if you look very, very carefully. And then this is my 14-inch Tom. Now, the drum set is the Broadcaster series. And I opted to go very, very old school. So rather than keep standard lugs for each um, head, I have one center lug with very long rods to give sort of this very old school effect. And it's that black oyster pearl, that black marine pearl finish. So it's very traditional. So, because I'm doing a variety of different things, you can see it's a hybrid of a lot of electronics and acoustics. So I've got an interesting tom setup that isn't traditional as far as the sizes. So I have the 14 here, and this is 10, 12, 8. I have an 8-inch concert tom, which I love, even with a CS head for that Phil Collins sound. 16, 18, and a 26 by 14 inch bass drum, which I love, bottom size, but with a little bit of muffling inside of it, so it doesn't, it's not completely open. And then I've got the uh, Broadcaster snare drum, which is hammered chrome over brass. So that is my illustrious acoustic drum setup. Mark. Mr. Dolbear. How are you? My dear long time I know. friend. It is a long time <laughs> friend as well. We've known each other for a long time. I know. Since the 90s? Well, I think. I've Do you known remember you, the 90s? Does anybody I've known you since you did the gig, with, started the gig with Pink. I think you've known me longer than that, haven't you? The first time we met was on the Share tour. Back in 2000, early 2000s. At Wembley, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it could be, could be the farewell tour. Yeah. That's and that was nearly 20 years ago. Oh, my God. Wow. And she's still touring. She I know. Says, still waving goodbye. Yeah, and you're still doing yeah. it. <laughs> I, I still work with uh, Cher when I'm not working with yeah. Pink. But yeah. now Jason Sutter is doing the Cher gig yeah. when I'm not doing it. He's killing it. Yeah. So. Well, this one, I mean, this backstage riff is slightly different to all the others. Yeah. Because normally we do them on concert day. Okay, well this okay, one, you're yeah. in rehearsals in Hollywood. We're in rehearsals in Hollywood um, right now. You've already been touring with Pink. Yeah, well what we're doing right now is this is the actual rehearsals for the Bonafide World Tour. Yeah. What we did last year is we did some festival dates in Europe, festival dates in America, and then we did some promo for the record. Mm. We came to the UK, you know, we did uh, Graham Norton, yeah. we did X Factor, X Factor, and now we're back in rehearsals. We're doing a completely different brand new show for the world tour that starts March 1st. Okay. So um, how much time does it take you to, to get the show ready to go out on the road? It takes me about one day. Now, how about the band? <laughs> oh, the band. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, frankly, it's unique for us because normally when we're starting a new tour, we go into rehearsal mode and we haven't played together for a long time. Yeah. But because we just got off doing yeah. 14, 16 dates, we played songs we played a lot of the new songs from the record we're learning some more new songs and then we're going to be learning some new transitions and it's all different production so we started two days ago we will be in rehearsal for about two weeks musically mm. and then we go into three weeks of full production rehearsals wow. so that's a little bit unheard of these days though isn't it they've cut a well i mean that, and... that has been the basic schedule that we've always adhered okay. to and most of Similar with the Share tour as well. Okay. I mean, most of the full production tours that have a lot of dancing, aerial, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of video, a lot of you know, uh, a lot of synchronized performance yeah. requires three weeks of rehearsal. It, it requires a lot of full production rehearsal, not 
necessarily because we don't know the parts, because for us, we learn the parts. We've been doing yeah. a lot of the same songs anyway, to be honest. But to get the full production coordinated, because it's a finely tuned instrument. Mm. And I think there's going to be maybe 150 people on this tour. Wow. So you think about the so synchronicity. So you've gone back to the, full, the big production. This like is the they did biggest. Before. This is 50% bigger than any other tour she's ever done. It's going to be huge. And I haven't even seen the full production yet. Okay. I won't see the stage until the first day of rehearsal. Wow. For the full production. Yeah. This is a very family orientated. Oh my bunch, gosh. I mean, I've been on a she tour bus picks, with you lot. And she handpicks are... everybody. Yeah. And not only just the, the, the band, but the dancers. Yeah. So many of the dancers have been with her for a long time, which is amazing for dancers, because mm -hmm. dancers physically can't do it as long as musicians can. So many of the crew members, it's like one big love fest. Do you, so why do you think that is? Do you think that's because Pink feels comfortable um, to be herself within yes. that group? Okay. And she is very loyal, and because she has, you know, you create a synergy. It's like being in real, any kind of relationship you've been in for a long time. The longer you've been in the relationship, the more comfortable you are, the more you get to know the nuances of everybody. And on stage, it's like we're, we just know. Mm. We know each other so well. We know how each other plays. We know each other's moves. You, you can detect the subtleties in every single thing. And this particular group of people, really works so beautifully together. And it's taken, there are some new people on the tour, but for the most part, it's been so many of the same people. And you just grow comfortable, and comfortable in, in a positive yep. way, comfortable in that you can just trust each other implicitly. And the thing about, she, you know, she is, in my opinion, and in everybody I know that's ever seen her perform, she's unprecedented. She's the greatest female performer ever. Yep. So she requires that of everybody. Everybody has to be as good at what they do as she is at what she right. does. Like there's no small moments, every detail is critical. So my dear friend Brent Barnett, who is the brains behind Gibraltar, we decided originally we were gonna do something conservative for my rack. <laughs> that changed very quickly because Brent knew that I needed a lot of size and we decided to go very elaborate but very functional. So what it, he did is he started with the bottom of the Gibraltar rack as the foundation that we decided to create some bars that come up that are visually, it almost looks like I'm inside of some shark jaws. But everything is functional, we're using everything so it's incredibly sturdy but it breaks down very quickly and very easily. And Brent basically designed it so there isn't too much I can tell you about it other than it utilizes all of the greatest clamps and the newest technology from Gibraltar. And it's very sturdy and I'm so grateful to come on stage every night and with this rack, nothing changes. It's exactly the same way every single night. Now what we did is we made it so it is symmetrical from left to right. And if you go out in front, you can see the whole picture. And it's very, very wide. It takes up a lot of space, but I love it. And I can't say enough about the Gibraltar hardware. And I'm playing the new G series, Gibraltar pedals as well. Lovely, lovely pedals with a little bit of non-sliding non sort of sandpaper stick on the pedals. Also, I love my cymbal, cymbal clamps because the cymbal, cymbal clamps enable the cymbals to be taken off and stacked and you always have the exact proportion, the exact amount of play in the cymbal. And also with the cymbal, you never get any change as far as the felts molding or morphing or any sort of slant that you do not want to have. I've told the story before. But I originally started playing Sabian cymbals because when they first came out, they sounded like Zildjian's and they were cheaper. And then I fell in love with the specific sound of Sabian's. And I've been with Sabian endorsing these cymbals since 1988, which would make it, oh my gosh, 30 years. So I'm very, very committed to their brand. And I will show you what I play. This is a 24 inch bash ride that I'm using as a crash. It's a little bit dirty, but we're in rehearsal. When we get into show mode, we're gonna shine everything up. My favorite symbols, I love these Evolution 18s. I have one Evolution 18 here with three rivets that Gary, my tech, put in. And then I've got 
another 18 inch evolution here and we inverted this because it has a different sound when it's inverted and we actually like the sort of white noisy trashy sound then I have an 18 inch aero crash on top of one of the 18 inch ozone crashes and this I can manipulate as far as making it more open and more closed and I have a couple of sizzles in there as well um, I'm playing a 12 inch standard a, a splash over here these are 15 inch groove hats i've gone between 15s and 16s on this gig i'm back to 15s because i have a little bit more control i'm a big crash big bright crash man this is a 8 20 inch explosion crash also a little dirty but hey sounds incredible and then this is a 20 inch raw bell crash and this is a 19 inch v crash and some of them are brilliant. This one is matte finish. And then I'm playing this nine inch radia. This is a prototype that I got at the Sabian factory years ago. It's a 21 inch. It's just illustrious and I love it. When it comes to gear, I play what I like. And I love Sabian. Okay, so you're out on the road on a long tour. Yeah. Okay, and you know, it's all pits and troughs, yeah. as we say. <laughs> so do you find you've got a day off? Do you guys like to hang out together as a band, or do you find you all need to go? We do. We okay, love to right. hang out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we, we, everybody enjoys everybody so much that there's a lot of social interaction. I mean, occasionally people just need to chill. Yeah. Like, I know when I need my alone time, and I love my alone time, because I also know I'm going to be able to see everybody on the gig. So what do you do? Wow. What do you do on your alone time when you're on tour? Well... Apart from meeting up with me, yeah, which we're meeting up with my have mates. A, go and have a. Uh, <laughs> Every day's a bit different. Vietnamese dinner for yeah. the last time, wasn't it? Was it no? Where did we eat last time? Turkish. Oh, we actually did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It so, wasn't. It wasn't a curry. No. It wasn't a ruby. No. What we do is we travel after the show on the bus. So we usually get in very early in the morning. Maybe it's a six or eight hour drive. So you sleep a bit on the bus. You get in, in the morning. Go back. Go into the hotel. Sleep as much as you can. I get up. I usually have coffee, try to have maybe a really light, healthy breakfast. I want to get a workout in. I want to get some stretching in. I'm usually doing some work. Um, the last few tours I've been in, I've been doing a lot of writing. I'm writing another book, so I'll okay. spend some time writing a book, working on the writing. I'm, I'm working on this particular book with my partner, Dr. Jim Samuels. I will also, I might be, occasionally I'll be doing a clinic or a speaking gig on days off, which changes the complexion of the day. And I like to get a lot of stuff done. Right. Um, I'll do some reading, have some good food. I will usually hook up with one of the bandmates or a lot of the bandmates, and singers, dancers. Uh, might go to a movie occasionally. Sometimes my family's out, my wife and my daughter. Yep. We'll do something fun. If there's something interesting to see in the city, I'll engage in that. I know a lot of people. So if there's people that I know or that I'm friendly with, I'll get together with some people that I know or I'm friendly with. Occasionally I'll have business meetings with some potential clients. And so you really I'll be are preparing. On music. You know, you're not walking around the walking around a park, you know, aimlessly I and getting lost. I will occasionally. Okay. I, you know, I love to stay engaged. Yeah. I love what I do. I love to keep active. I like to keep my brain going. That's why I'm writing my second book. Um, I'll be doing presentations, speaking gigs, yeah. seminars, clinics, <laughs> um, or I'll be meeting with people that I know. I said I'll be working on the book. Engagement is very critical to Dude, me. I'm exhausted from really? hearing your day off. Oh my gosh, it's not a day off. You know, I, you know, that's I, I get uh, to do this stuff. <laughs> One of my I philosophies: know. I don't have to. I get to do this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Occasionally, I will just, you know, f off and do nothing. Yeah. Sometimes, if my body's really tired, if I'm a little sick, I'll lie in bed. I'll read. I'll watch movies. Yeah. I'll watch shows. I'll look on YouTube. I also want to keep hip to what's going on with yeah. trends. So I like to know what's going on. I'm very political. I listen to a lot of uh, liberal political radio. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. And so I, on a on a working day. On a working know, day, yeah. it's not too different. What'll right. happen is I'll get up in the morning, try to get a workout in, okay. try to eat well. Yeah. Usually the lobby call might be two or three. Then we're going to go head over to the gig, get to the gig maybe three thirty or four, um, have a little bit of time, and then do sound check. And then after sound check is dinner. Then after dinner, I might do some writing. Sometimes I'll lie down and take a little nap. I'm really good at napping. I right. love to nap. Okay. So if I'm a little bit tired, because I all my, the the day off, the the show day is all about the show. Yeah. So everything I do is geared toward that. 
So I'm a guy that can have dinner, go on the bus, crawl my bunk, sleep for 45 minutes, get up, throw water in my face, stretch, do some push-ups, bam, go on I'm stage. I'm ready to go, yeah. Ready to go. I'm yeah. fortunate that I'm that guy. Yeah. But most of the show days I won't nap because I won't need to, mm. but I'm prepared to. And then we do, the, and then we get prepped for the show. I do like a half hour warm up. I don't do drumming warm ups. I do stretching. Okay, yeah. And I do sort of like emotional. It's getting myself sort of okay. emotionally and prepared, getting myself in what I call the state, the state of the show. Yeah. Because the moment I get on stage, it's like I become myself times ten. I'm so present for every single detail for her, for the audience, for the band, and I put everything into a show. If I'm not thoroughly exhausted at the end of a show, I don't feel like I've done my gig. Okay. And then the end of the show. Oh, unfortunately, that's my hungriest time, so I, I always eat after the show. Okay. And I know I shouldn't from the belly, but that's when I eat. Yeah, you've just and then burl, on, burl on the bus is great, because like, yeah. on the bus we get to hang out. And yeah. we'll, you know, maybe have like a glass of wine, and say we have a little bit of food. Might watch a movie, might listen to some music. I have this vision on this tour, and I haven't even found a buddy, but I want to play chess. Okay. My daughter, my seven-year-old daughter taught me how to play chess. I love chess. So I'm thinking maybe on the bus I get into some chess matches yeah. and maybe do like a half hour with somebody, but i got to find a chess buddy. Yeah, yeah. But either way, we just love to hang. We right. have so much fun. I have tried so many different drum head companies, and I was with Remo. I left to try a lot of other companies. And that was years ago, and I've come back to Remo because Remo feels like home to me. There's something very, very personal. And I believe that the drum head affects the sound of the drum as much, if not more, than the drum itself. And so my Remo head setup, I'm in love with these clear vintage emperors for the toms. Particularly with the broadcaster series Gretsch Drums, there's something about it. It's a wonderful, wonderful marriage. I have a wide tuning range. I always play clear ambassadors on the bottom of all the toms. Of course, on my 8-inch tom, I play a CS because this one is a concert tom. On the snare drums, I've pretty much played the Emperor X forever because I get plenty of tone and they last so long. And I drive my tech Gary crazy because he always wants to change snare heads. I feel like a snare head sounds better and better and better. I will keep a snare head on for a couple of months and I play really, really hard. I wanna keep it on as long as I can because it feels like it seats and just grooves with the drum and then eventually it loses its will to live and it has to be changed. But you could see this head right here has been on for a long time. You could see my little cheat notes every time we change arrangements for songs. I tend to write the arrangement changes right on the snare drum so I remember. So that's what's on both my 12-inch snare drum and my 14. On the bass drum is the P3CS Black Dot. And I think that covers it for the heads. As far as electronics, I've always played Roland. I'm with Roland 100%. And funny thing is this is not even the newest, coolest. This is the TD30 head, which I'm going to be replacing with the TD50 because the TD50 samples, but I still love the sound of these electronics and just the feel that has. I'm using the standard Roland V-Drum pads. On this particular gig, I'm only using two of the pads. And I'm using this trigger pad, which I love the feel of this, and also I can get it in tightly so it's very convenient. And I'm using the Roland bass drum trigger pedal, which feels incredible. I have been with Vic Firth for 23 years. And I've never gotten my own signature stick because I've never wanted my own signature stick because I love what's straight out of the box. Originally I was a 5B guy, then I was a 5B extreme guy, now I'm an X55B guy. And so why mess with perfection? And I also use the mallets, I believe I'm using the T3 staccato mallets. And of course I'm using the Mike Dolbear design stick bag, which works perfectly around my floor tom. And then I have the other Vic Firth stick bag around my snare drum for a very quick retrieval. And I've got it on the other snare drum. And I've got it over here. I'm just Vic Firth in shroud. So you have a year off from going out with Pink and you do all your other stuff and then... Well, we had a lot more in a year off. Okay, well then the tour <laughs> starts, okay? Yeah. Do you do anything to prepare yourself physically and mentally for that tour to start? Or, it's a great question. Or do you find that you can just fall straight into it? The rehearsal space, because I'm so physical yeah. that I'm actually getting in shape in rehearsals. Okay. And I've, ever, since I, 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 ever since I can remember, I go back to the Richard Marks tour I did in 1989. That is, you know, the first time I really felt like I was so physical and I felt like 
the rehearsals were the getting in shape. Mm. I mean, I keep myself in reasonable shape. I'm always, you know, I don't run as much as you do, but I run, and when I get on the treadmill, I'm yeah. running my seminar scripts. Yeah, so I okay. keep my brain active yeah. to keep me interested and engaged in running. But I keep myself in decent shape. I keep the workout going, keep the running going. So when I get into this point right here, it's not like a shock to the body. Right. It's what about like mentally? A, well, that's part of it as well. Okay. Because mentally for me, it's just, it's the nuance. Remember, I talked about the subtlety. So it's, the, it's getting in the mental state, doing the set enough so it's second nature and I can really connect and get into that sort of other level where I'm, there's no thinking. It's literally just being present right. and responding in real time, being mm. completely engaged. And that just takes the rehearsal. But now, as I said, we're kind of in that zone already. Yeah. We've only been off for about a month since we did our last show. We're back in rehearsals. We're learning some new songs. There'll be some arrangement changes and some transitions. Paul Merkovich, the MD, is writing some transitions for us. But we're kind of in the zone. Yeah. So we haven't even run the yeah. songs. We're just learning the new songs now, kind of getting those to the point where we're beyond thought and we're into just being present and playing. So um, coming towards the end now, because um, I know you've got a family, uh, obviously. Thank um, God for that. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, so a young family as well. Um, and obviously that becomes more demanding at home, yeah. you know, for your time, if you like. So does that play heavily on you when you go out on the road or, you, you know, does the family accept and that you accept that no, this is my job and that's what I do? Yeah. Well, my wife's extraordinary. My yeah. wife, Lisa, I met her on the road yeah, with Pink. And she was a filmmaker. Yeah, that's right. In her downtime, she was doing some administration for... The catering company. Okay. And then somebody on the tour got fired. They said, can you go out on the road, please? She said, okay, I'll go out on the road. Just cover for them. She went out on the road with the catering company, and we met that. Yeah. And then we got together after that. We got married in 2008. Um, she left. She's Swedish. She was yeah. met, spent most of her adult life in London and, and, uh, and uh, Ireland. And she left all of what she was doing to come out and be with me. Mm. Got married in 2008. She got pregnant in 2009. Uh, gave birth to my perfect daughters yeah. in 2010 and my daughter has been to date on a, about 195 flights okay. 17 countries 25 states <laughs> they know this is what she's I do she's got a musician's passport yeah. isn't she and now yeah. my wife is back you know creating creating films and creating uh, TV shows yeah. she basically gave her career away to raise my daughter and to be available for my family to yeah. see me and now my daughter's old enough and in school, so my wife's getting back into uh, okay. developing so shows and writing So when you're out on the road, um, you know, is that get, does that get harder for you? It's, if I could be totally honest, I don't get paid for being on the road. Right. I love what I do. Yeah. Okay. I get paid for being apart from my family. Right. That's what it is yeah, to Yeah, cool. But, mm. I miss them so much it hurts, but our, our agreement is... We don't go any longer in three weeks if we can. Okay. And the beautiful thing about this tour is my daughter is friends with uh, Pink's daughter, okay. Willow. They're similar in age, so it's very comfortable for my family to come out. But they don't come out for extended periods of time. They come out a weekend, maybe a week. When we go to Europe, they might come out for a week or two. If okay. we go to Australia, they may come out a lot longer because we're going to Australia when my daughter's off of school. Oh, brilliant. But we work it out. Yeah. They know that's what I do. My daughter's grown up. On the road, my daughter was two and a half months when they flew out when we did the carnival tour, mm. playing for fifty to 100,000 people per night. My wife, you know, holding my daughter and the baby Bjorn on her chest, my daughter with a little head, you know, ear protection. So they're incredible. Yeah. And, and, they and love the, it. My and daughter loves to travel. She loves to go on planes. She, when she, they came to visit me in Vegas when I was doing something, she found out it was a one-hour flight. She cried because it wasn't long enough. Okay. Mommy, I want to be on the plane longer. She yeah. loves to travel. Yeah. So I'm a lucky man. It's really worked well, out beautifully for yeah, me. Yeah, because the amazing thing as well, and uh, that I, I think we can quite happily talk about, is that uh, you obviously never thought you are a cancer sufferer or a yeah, cancer survivor, and I wasn't cancer supposed survivor, to be and you would never be able to father a child. And so, you know, a cancer's gone, okay, cancer's gone, and B, my daughter's a little and you've miracle. got a daughter. Yeah, so, so it's an amazing story. Family is first to me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, totally. and you know how, what a hard worker yep. it is. And I, and I have my my drumming career, my speaking yep. career, my yep. writing career. Yep. Family is still first. Yeah, and as long as I have my priorities straight, it all works, mm -hmm. and my family gets it, and I have an amazing wife. Cool. Really? Well, it's a perfect way to finish. I mean, you have an amazing kid's amazing I, wife. Well, you know what it's like. Yours right? is the, an amazing story because, like you say, you, you know, you're yeah, I wasn't supposed survivor. to be a father or child. No. 
And I'm going to leave it there because that's a wonderful way of leaving. Yeah. Like I said, it's always good. We can sit and My gas. brother. Thank you for spending the time, showing us around the spaceship. I love you, brother. Um, you are my brother from a UK mother. <laughs> <laughs> and that is over and out.